welcome to Chai with Manju. We have a very special guest today, Mr. Jeet Saxena, who is a very well-known entrepreneur. Let's meet him today and find out the story behind his life. Mr. Saxena, welcome. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. So, entrepreneurship has changed a lot in last 30 years. But there are a few things that will always work for entrepreneurs. So, can you tell us something about that? Well, I think that the most important thing mm -hmm. that will always be there and hasn't changed uh -huh. uh, in spite of all this time mm -hmm. is the human aspect of it. Uh, entrepreneurship is not about technology, mm -hmm. it's not about a grand mm -hmm. business uh, idea, it's not about uh, some sort of a radical change in uh, business models. Mm -hmm. In the end, it's all about people, and uh, mm -hmm. it's about the entrepreneur and the way he or she uh, deals with people and builds the team and, and solves the problems. Uh, so that part has not changed mm -hmm. at all. And uh, in fact, I think the awareness of that issue is even more prominent now mm -hmm. than it used to be okay. in the early days. Okay. And you had once mentioned about five things that would be very useful for all entrepreneurs. Can you expand on that again? I think the first one is uh, just having a belief in yourself okay. uh, and, and being very clear mm -hmm. about what your objectives are. Okay. Why are you doing this? Okay. okay. What do you want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you're honest, on those issues mm -hmm. that is important. Mm -hmm. The second issue that is important is uh, do you like to deal with people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you like to uh, listen to issues from customers and be able to deal with them? Mm -hmm. Or do you find that stressful? Mm -hmm. Okay. If it is later, I mean later, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that you maybe you should not Mm -hmm. about being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. but if you like to solve problems if you like to deal with uncertainty mm -hmm. uh, if you like to deal with the ups and downs on a daily basis mm -hmm. okay right. then entrepreneurship is is great mm -hmm. because every day is a new day right. Uh, right. one day you are on top of the world uh -huh. next day you think <laughs> you may not survive at all mm -hmm. uh, and 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 it's not only about yourself at that point it's about your entire team right. and and irrespective of how you can deal with the issue you have to worry about your entire team dealing right. with that issue uh, you cannot take them through the ups and downs right. that you might be going through so those are some of the things that are so mm -hmm. important right. okay and and to be able to keep your focus mm -hmm. throughout all those ups and downs mm -hmm. not get swayed away by what the others think or what the market is saying outside mm -hmm. of, uh, other, for example, what the financial markets are saying at a given time, what the latest craze is, mm -hmm. uh, all those things mm -hmm. uh, are not important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think being a contrarian uh -huh. is better mm -hmm. uh, rather than somebody who goes with the trends. If something is already hot, Maybe it's too late. Okay. Maybe if something is too hot, maybe there are thousand people chasing that idea, uh -huh. and that way you are competing with thousand people. Uh -huh. If you go the other way, uh -huh. maybe you are all by yourself. You don't have to worry about competing with those thousand people. Sure. So I've always been a contrarian, uh -huh. and I think that has helped me uh, in thinking about issues. And you've always said that the world would be a better place if there were more entrepreneurs. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, because it is the entrepreneurs who come up with creative solutions mm -hmm. uh, and it is the entrepreneurs who, who create the jobs. Mm -hmm. It's the process of entrepreneurship that really teaches you about yourself, who you are, mm -hmm. what your strengths and development needs are. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide behind a large organization. Right. Okay? Right. You, you see yourself almost every day uh, because the uh, the impacts of what you do uh, is very very clear in a very short period of time. Sure. So, uh, 
it is great. And then the other thing is uh, entrepreneurship is a virtuous cycle uh, in the following way. When people see somebody create something of value uh -huh. where nothing existed before, mm -hmm. they look at that and they say, gee, maybe I can do the same thing. And they go out and do that. In fact, the most satisfying thing of my entrepreneurial journey mm -hmm. is number of people who worked in my companies uh -huh. who have gone out and started their own companies and in some cases have built bigger and more successful companies mm -hmm. which is great sure. okay sure. and and they have now provided many more jobs created a lot more value mm -hmm. and for me that has been very uh, sort of gratifying to okay. see that right and i've enjoyed um, reading all these new subsets of entrepreneurship, so to speak. Um, you know, in our expo, we have medical entrepreneurship, yes. all the new devices, yes. the stents in the art, right. all these new things that have been discovered thanks to entrepreneurs, right? right? Um, I think it's not just creativity and hard work that is required for entrepreneurship, but one thing that stops many people is the fear of failure. And how does one overcome that? Yeah, that is one <laughs> issue that I just do not understand uh, this yeah. issue about fear of failure. Uh -huh. What are you afraid of? Mm -hmm. What are you going to lose? A lot of times it's the family money and you know your family who should support you, different things that you uphold. Right? Yes, I mean we are fortunate at least uh, talking about entrepreneurship in this country. Uh, we know that we have the basic and the basics will always be there. We can always go get a job. Sure. We can always go and provide for our family. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what are we afraid of? Uh -huh. <laughs> we have nothing to lose. Uh, in fact, somebody once asked me why more immigrants uh, start companies. Uh -huh. And I think, I would say, maybe the answer is they have a lot less to lose. Right. We came here with nothing. Okay? Yes. Nobody knew us. Right? So what do we, what did we have to lose? Uh, and, and so this concept of we have something to lose is something that can be very limiting mm -hmm. in life. Uh, I don't believe you have anything to lose, okay? Uh, you, you have experience to gain, you have a lot more to gain then lose. And if you look at things that way, that fear begins to disappear. Uh, and I think, I think uh, most entrepreneurs, uh, of course, think about that once in a while, uh, but they are confident that they can deal with it. Uh, and if they, if they don't have that inner confidence to deal with it, they should not be entrepreneurs because nothing is guaranteed uh -huh. and even though some entrepreneurs when they do become very successful uh -huh. tend to rewrite history and say oh they always had the vision and uh, things just work perfectly I've known many many very very successful entrepreneurs uh -huh. and all of them had the ups and downs and and the beauty of uh, their success was that they were able to adapt mm -hmm. and they were able, they were to, they were able to move forward mm -hmm. and deal with those issues but uh -huh. they did have the ups and downs everybody it's does roller coaster yeah it's a roller coaster right things change yes. especially in our world of technology things change dramatically uh -huh. so uh, to be able to deal with that ups and downs or that tenacity to deal with all right. ups and downs is a is a is a very important aspect of entrepreneurship. I think tenacity and I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs, perseverance is also very important. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, I think, I think the, that you, you raise a good point about perseverance uh, and it can be taken two ways. I think sometimes the entrepreneurs make a mistake of staying with their original idea too long. Okay. In spite of the evidence coming from the market that their original idea needs to be modified uh, or they need to move mm -hmm. in a little different direction mm -hmm. and they do not. Okay. 
you know, they become sort of hot-headed about their original idea. And that can be equally bad. So do you think that's ego or lack of open-mindedness? I think lack of open uh, lack of open-mindedness, lack of uh, uh, being able to uh, listen to the marketplace, okay. or even having people around you that are not as good as you thought they were, because they would tell you also okay. that there is something wrong. Right. Okay, uh, uh, so, and uh, I think that is important uh, to have that uh, understanding of the fact that things are changing. We need to change. So the adaptability is very important. Very right? important. Probably the most important, uh, and uh, so we use different words: adaptability, tenacity, whatever it is. But to be able to uh, deal with it is important. In my view, mm -hmm. the only difference between a startup and a big company uh -huh. is the learning cycle and the sp the speed at which you learn. Okay, and if you lose, if you don't learn, you have no advantage over the big companies. The engineers and the marketeers at IBM are as good as the engineers and marketeers at a small company. Uh -huh. They have gone to the same schools, uh -huh. maybe better schools. Uh -huh. And the only difference is that at those large companies, uh -huh. the feedback cycle is very long. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. By the time they understand what's happening in the marketplace, so much time has gone by. In a startup, the feedback cycle is in real time, okay. and you have to adapt to that. And that feedback cycle is the only difference, right. in my view. Now, I um, have read that you have said that you're a believer in the right timing. Are you a believer in destiny? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know how we define that. Uh -huh. I don't know what that is. But uh -huh. I do know that uh, uh, there are events beyond our control right. Okay, that happen, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And you just need to deal with it, uh, but there's nothing you can do about it. So you don't look back and say, "Why did this happen?" Uh, you you try to accept that, uh, both good and bad. Uh, I hate to take credit for things that have turned out to be good. Okay. And I refuse to take the blame for things that did not turn out well, uh, uh, for whatever reason. In my life, I've learned to deal with things as they come mm -hmm. and try to make the best out of it. I read uh, once that you said you're not a believer in could, would, and should. That's right. absolutely <laughs> right. Yes. I absolutely like that. Right. I like yeah. that. And, yeah. and the older I get, the mm -hmm. more I believe in it. Right. I think as you get older, you also realize that life does unfold in the way it's meant to be. No. When you're young, you don't realize that. You feel you can change everything. Right. So. Let's talk about your childhood. You said that your dad worked for railways, so you moved a lot, and you finally settled for a time in Agra. Mm -hmm. right? So tell us about your early childhood. Well, it was great. Uh, we had a uh, lot of fun. I was the youngest of uh, all my brothers, uh -huh. and uh, and maybe as a result of being the youngest child, I benefited a lot uh -huh. from uh, 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 from that okay. and maybe took advantage of that in many ways uh, where mm -hmm. I could. Uh, but it was, I have uh, very uh, fond memories mm -hmm. of my childhood uh -huh. uh, and it was great. Uh, okay. We were a typical middle class family uh -huh. with middle class values uh -huh. uh, and uh, the family was very close. So a lot of cousins and uncles and aunts and, and so on, and uh, and it was great. Your friends tell me you're quite a family man even now. Yes, and we are fortunate. <laughs> uh, we are fortunate that a uh, lot of our relatives, mm -hmm. uh, especially my nieces and nephews, uh -huh. uh, and their husbands and wives, mm -hmm. are here, and they are mo most of them are in New England. So uh, we get to enjoy each other's mm -hmm. company often, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's great. Okay. Yeah. Now um, your mom is uh, is going to be hundred years old. Yes. Now, yes. <laughs> growing up, were you close to your mom, dad, or both? I, I think I think the uh, 
emotionally probably I was closer to my dad, mm -hmm. uh, but my dad was a fairly busy person. Mm -hmm. uh, so on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. I had to rely more on my mom, clearly, uh -huh. right? Uh, but uh, it was it was great. She uh, we were fortunate that she was able to come here every year. Uh, it was only last year now that she did not come here. Uh, and uh, every summer she would be with us Wonderful. here for three months, That's and uh, and uh, so I hope that uh, that continues, uh, mm -hmm. and and that has been good for us, yes. good for my kids, mm -hmm. and good for all our relatives to see her there. Absolutely. Now you've been married for forty-two years to Sonia. Yes. And it was an arranged marriage, yes. right? Yes. Tell me, how did you meet her at that age? Do you remember that? Of course, yeah, of course I do. Uh, it was uh, it was nothing dramatic. It uh -huh. was uh, uh, one of those trips to India when my uh -huh. father suggested that maybe it's time for me to get married, and and I didn't have anybody in mind. Uh, uh -huh. He asked me that, and uh, uh, he he suggested that he knows this family and this girl that I should meet and uh, they live in Delhi and we should meet with them and uh, my father said uh, his belief was that uh, she's absolutely the right person <laughs> for uh, not only for me but for my family okay. and uh, and so okay. we said okay so I met with her and did you like her right away I don't know whether that <laughs> like is the word okay. uh, I think uh, she was definitely quite attractive and uh, so if that is like I would say yes yeah. uh, but I didn't know her okay. uh, and uh, so it was in fact I got to know her more after, 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 after we got married. So what was the first thing you liked about her or what you remember? The way she looked. <laughs> the way she yeah. looked? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> okay. Now, um, you've gone to IIT Mumbai, then yes. um, I know you did your MS uh, from Michigan and uh, MBA from Boston University, yes. right? And um, so tell us about how did you decide to come to United States and a little bit about that journey? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, when I graduated from IIT, uh, mm -hmm. I was always fascinated by what was happening in America. I would mm -hmm. read about it mm -hmm. in magazines and so on. Mm -hmm. And there was something about uh, the uh, the way things uh, were being done, or at least the way they were being talked about in the mm -hmm. magazines, that was very attractive. Yes. Uh, I had an older brother mm -hmm. who had come here and was doing his residency in cardiac mm -hmm. surgery and he also liked it very much so mm -hmm. whenever I would talk to him uh -huh. uh, he would say it's a great place and so on and if you can uh -huh. you should come here so I think that's what was motivating me to come here. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur? No. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I don't think so. so. And you're interested in technology so what made you an entrepreneur you think? I think I think it was just the way things turned out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, basically, as far as my first mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. was concerned, uh, I wanted to pursue a, a product idea. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was running uh, all of R and D at a company called Data General. Mm -hmm. And uh, my CEO would not fund that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, he thought that idea was a little not mainstream, was not mm -hmm. in the interest of the company and maybe he was right but I I decided that I wanted to pursue it and mm -hmm. uh, and it was really uh, at the spur of the moment that in a meeting with him I said okay if you're not going to fund it mm -hmm. then I will go and start uh -huh. on my own mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and I remember I came home and I told my wife that uh, this is the discussion that took place and I might be leaving this company and, and going out on my own. And you were so writing your history at that time. What? Yeah, well, I don't know. It is, but it was it was not with a long term planning or 
uh, this intense desire okay. to okay. do something. It was none of that. Some of the best things in life are unexpected. You know, I truly believe <laughs> that. I truly believe okay. that. Right. So my next question for you is regarding entrepreneurship. Um, nowadays, a lot of women want to be entrepreneurs. I know my own, we both are physicians, but my daughter wants to be an entrepreneur. She wanted to that. make sure I yeah. do the interview today. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, tell us that, um, have you seen that trend and is there, uh, are there any differences in the in between women entrepreneur or and, and male entrepreneurs? Are there any specific strength that you notice in women? We know that you mentor a lot of young entrepreneurs as well. So do you notice any difference or any particular strength that women entrepreneurs present? I hate to generalize, <laughs> you know, I think okay. each individual right. is uh, right. different. They have mm -hmm. their unique uh, properties. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's the beauty of life. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, but I, I think having said that, uh -huh. I think uh, in general, women are better at communicating. Okay. They are probably better at team building mm -hmm. and more caring about the the culture uh, of the organization, uh, which could be important mm -hmm. in uh, many entrepreneurial settings uh, is that uh, communication is that uh, team building uh, I think that could be a positive attribute yeah. yeah tell us about your you're associated with Thai about your mentoring of young entrepreneurs in Thai so uh, once uh, I stopped uh, working as a full-time entrepreneur uh -huh. uh, I wanted to uh, see if there is a way I could help uh, the younger entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though I had been involved with Thai mm -hmm. uh, for a much longer time, even when I was working, mm -hmm. uh, I felt that now I would have a little bit more time mm -hmm. uh, to work with these uh, uh, budding entrepreneurs and see if, if there's any way mm -hmm. I could help mm -hmm. uh, in that. Okay. So let's find out some fun things about you. Yeah. <laughs> Which I had to really browbreed some of your friends <laughs> to tell me. So we know you like to play poker. Yes. Um, and you come back to Massachusetts on first Friday of the month. <laughs> Is that true? From yeah, yeah, we like to have a friendly <laughs> poker game. Yes, right, yes. right. And you love golf, right? Oh, I'm not good at it, but I love the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you like to read, right? Yes, so and listen to music. Listen yes. To so about music, I know you like Sahir Ludhianvi. <laughs> He's my favorite. He's my favorite, think, right? Think, uh, and yeah. one of your friends told me that you sing one particular song very beautifully. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I don't true? sing it beautifully, but I do sing it <laughs> when I'm forced to. to sing? When I'm forced to sing. Yeah, can we force you today? No, no please. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, tell us um, something about what do you think is your biggest strength? I know you're a good judge of people and you I think intuition is. And, and believing in myself, mm -hmm. uh, not in an arrogant way, okay. but uh, believing that I can deal with things. What was the best advice given to you <laughs> that you remembered? Any great advice given to you as you were growing up or in college or later on in life? I think I know that in my business life, mm -hmm. uh, and it sort of sounds funny, but uh, <laughs> one of my investors once told me, uh, well, you created this mess, so you deal with it, okay? In a way, what he was saying indirectly is that you have to take responsibility for things. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is going to come mess. around and clean up your mess. So accountability. Okay. Yes, right. and, and accountability and then the mm -hmm. uh, related ownership of that problem, okay? and. That's a very good advice. Yeah, and it is. It is. So, my next question for you is uh, something about challenges. 
uh, in 2014, uh, you were diagnosed with uh, end-stage renal disease, and of course the physicians would like to know it was IgA nephropathy, which is very rare. Um, and uh, you're undergoing dialysis, and uh, you recently um, decided to go for a kidney transplant. There's a lot of ignorance about kidney transplant in our community especially. Is there something you would like to talk about that for our audience? <laughs> well, I think the, the main thing I would like to say is uh, that like everybody else, I had no idea about right. transplants. Right. Or, uh, and fortunately, I've been a very healthy person yes. throughout my life. Yes. I mean, I don't even have headaches. Uh, Were you diagnosed? How did you? <laughs> what kind of symptoms you presented? It was. It was not a symptom. It was a regular insurance check. Really? That wow. Uh, wow. first detected the problem. Uh, so, uh, and that's when the doctor started to follow it up. Out and of the blue. Yeah. Wow. So it was. It was not any symptom. I was. I was feeling fine. And uh, I still feel fine, right? So, uh, uh, so I was not aware of the issue. Uh -huh. And once you become aware of the issue, mm -hmm. I have a tendency to accept for what that is, and to see what what it is that I can do about it. Solution based. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So okay, I uh, have this uh, issue. Uh, I have to go for a transplant as a solution. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm in a fortunate position that mm -hmm. at least I have access to the resources. Right. Okay. Right. As I got to, as I became familiar with this issue and I read about it, mm -hmm. uh, I found out there are thousands of people right. all over the world and many of them are not fortunate to have any resources to help them right. in this uh, in this uh, problem. Right. And so that was my motivation to mm -hmm. say, first of all, uh, let me ask for help, mm -hmm. but also let me try to do whatever I could. Absolutely to raise the awareness of this problem. And it may not help me, uh, but I hope somewhere, somewhere uh, some, somebody would be helped by that. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, that will be great, even if, even if one person is helped Absolutely. by this. Yeah, it will be great. I have yeah. learned, seen over the years, you become sometimes a means for a bigger good of the, of right. the community. Yes. You just become the means for doing things. Yeah. And, yeah. And Maybe that's that's the uh, that's the reason. Yes. Maybe that's the re there's a reason why something like this happens, and uh, and you try to do the best you can. Absolutely. Yeah. So that brings uh, me to the final part of the interview, yeah. <laughs> which we call rapid response. Okay. So this is the fun part. I yeah, just okay. ask you about some of your favorite things and what is the first thing that comes to your head. So tell us about your favorite movie. Oh, that's easy. Kages ke fool. Oh. You find out good at that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Who's your favorite actor? I would say uh, that's a good one. Uh, Amitabh Bachchan. And who's your favorite actress? She has passed away, but Smita Patel. Okay. The serious ones. Yes, huh? yeah, <laughs> now, what's your favorite song? I think you already mentioned Yes, yeah. <laughs> which you're not singing for us. <laughs> no, no, because you know, Next audience, <laughs> I don't think your audience would be interested. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite food? I heard something about biryani. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like biryani. Uh, food is something I enjoy. Uh, uh, now, um, what is the best advice that you would give someone today to live their life? Don't take it too seriously. What's your last word on Chai with Manjir? <laughs> it's been great. Thank, Thank you, you yeah. so much for coming. Yeah. Thank you very much.